Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us for Bible studies. I'm going to go over the calendar really quick. Let's get this done. So tomorrow, of course, is um, morning prayer. Oh, man, it's so small at this time. Uh, morning prayer starts at 8 o'clock if you'd like to join our congregation in morning prayer. And then we have, um, of course, our midweek service. Prayer starts at 8, 8.30. No, excuse me. Prayer starts at um, 8.45 if you'd like to join us for morning prayer before service starts. Then there's women's prayer on the 12th. So I believe Sister Donna heads that up. And then we have our um, midweek service. And then, of course, we're going to have Bible studies again. So that's all I have for the calendar. There's more things, but it's kind of small. So, oops, i got to blow it up. Next. So praise the Lord. Let's pick up today's offering. You know, um, sometimes it's like routine when we give. And sometimes we act like it's a surprise. But I do know one thing. I heard this one person preaching. Point the fan on me, please. Last time I heard this one preacher preaching, his name was R.W. Shambach. And he talked about sowing a seed before you have received the seed. And it really spoke to me. He said that one time he was in debt, so God spoke to him. And this man healed tens of thousands of people. And God said, well, believe me for something. Whatever you sow, I will bless you with. So this man started paying tithes on money he hadn't received yet. And became a millionaire, believe it or not. So I started listening to that concept. And um, one day I'll fully act on it. But give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking, and running over it. When I thought about that scripture, God says, give first by faith, and it will be given unto you. That's why it's so important. Do not lose the zeal of giving towards the Lord. Do not lose that. And um, you will reap when you sow it. Amen. So let's pray. If you want to give through Zao, all the information is on Facebook. And if you'd like to give through an offering envelope, the usherettes pass them out. There are so many methods of giving, so just, I encourage you, just give, and God will give it back to you. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless everyone's offering today, God, and I pray in Jesus' name, those that have been giving online towards our Bible studies, well, for our Bible studies to church, we thank you and we just love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. So we're on our last series about the Holy Spirit as we all turn to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now really, everyone really loves this chapter. Many weddings, they're talked about. This chapter is read. Many people read this chapter during Valentine's, during holidays of love, when they want to express love. But I pray in Jesus' name that we express what the Holy Spirit truly wants us to understand in these scriptures. So the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. And it says, If I were to speak with eloquence in earth's many languages, I'm reading a different interpretation. And in the heavenly tongue of angels, yet I don't express myself with love. My words would be reduced to the hollow sound of nothing more than a clinging symbol. And verse 2. And if I were to have um, the gifts of prophecy with, pro with a profound understanding of God, hidden secrets... And if I um, possessed unending supernatural knowledge, 
And if I had the greatest gift of faith that could move mountains but have never learned to love, then I am nothing. And if I were to be so generous as to give away everything I own and feed the poor and to offer my body to be burned as a mortar without the pure motive of love, I would gain nothing of value. Verse 4. Love is large and incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. It refuses to be jealous when blessings come to someone else. Love does not brag about one's achievements, nor inflates its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect, nor selfishly seeks um, its own honor. Love is not easily irritated or, or quick to make offense. Love joyfully celebrates honestly and finds delight in what is wrong. No, and finds no delight, excuse me, in what is wrong. Love is a safe place of shelter, for it never stops believing the best for others. Love never takes failure as defeat, for it never gives up. Perfect love, love never stops loving. It extends beyond the gift of prophecy, which eventually fades away. It is more enduring than tongues which will one day fall silent. Love maintains long after, um, long after words of knowledge are forgotten, or present knowledge and are prophetic and are but just partial. But when love, perfection arrives, the partial will fade away. When I was a child, I spoke. This is a very key note. When I was a child, I spoke about childish matters, for I saw things like a child and reasoned like a child. But the day came when I matured and I set aside my childish ways. For now we see but a faint reflection of the riddles and mysteries and thoughts reflected in the mirror. But one day we will see face to face my understanding is in incomplete now, but one day I will understand everything, just as everything about me has been fully understood. Until then, there are three things that remain, faith, hope, and love. Yet love surpasses them all. So above all else, let love be the beautiful prize for which you run. That was a lot to read. <laughs> Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, and I pray that the Holy Spirit speaks to us all about love, God, our motives and our walk with you, and most of all, bless us with this love, Lord, this love that will move mountains, this love that can conquer all things. This love that is the greatest gift we can give to humanity, Lord. Let us understand it. In Jesus' name, amen. Earlier I read an illustration on this, but I'm going to kind of twist it around because it's gonna, we're going to get the same meaning. You see, there was a, a dad who blessed his son with his old Thunderbird. And this Thunderbird was, was nice, but it needed a paint job. It was green. And it wasn't the big engine Thunderbird. So the son painted it, fire engine red. And then after that, he put two um, hood shovels. What are they called, Cousin Tony? That makes it look faster? Either way, they're the hood shovels. That makes it look like they have an intake, one in the engine but it had the same um, engine in it. 
Then he put glass pipes and a racing stripe down the middle. To so many people, it attracted them. They thought it looked fast. They thought it looked powerful. They thought that it was, it can be any car in the world, that it was just elevated. But in all reality, when you picked up that hood, it had the same old engine. That's why Paul was talking about these Corinthians. Like many Christians today, they have the gifts of prophecy. They have the gifts of discernment. They have the gifts of healing. But they have the same heart with no love behind it. You see, what we're going to talk about today is the Holy Spirit loves. What is your motive? For being a Christian. Many people have amazing motives. Beautiful motives. I love Jesus. My motive is to get closer to God. My motive is to fight this battle that I've been battling for years. Whatever it is. A mind battle. An illness. Spiritual warfare. Whatever it is. We all have a motive. My motive is to keep going so my kids can get saved, my husband, my wife, my loved ones. But behind that motive, friends, yes, we can be reaching for gifts from God. You see, Paul had a special discernment like all of us have. Why? Because his heart was focused, like Pastor preached on focused, on the most important thing. And that's love. Because so many times, if we're not careful, what he saw in the Corinthian church, he was very proud of them. They came a long ways, like many of you have. Now you speak with eloquence. There's no longer bad words behind your, your vocal expression. Now you can speak preaching to people, telling them about the love of God, testimonies, letting them know how God did wonderful works in your life. That's amazing. But if we're not careful, friends, we lose the value of why God saved us. We lose the motive of why God um, sent His Son. He sent His Son for us out of love. And Paul started seeing these things. What is the motive? You see, yes, all the people around him. It's like when you see somebody that you look up to. I can only imagine Paul visiting his church. Like when you're around men and women of ministry or just someone that you look up to. You love to show how much you matured in the Lord. Some do. Me, I don't care, to be honest. And you start to speak a language that is heavenly. What does he mean by heavenly language? I'm talking about verse 1. You see, men and women of God, we don't express ourselves normally when you're anointed. You don't express, express yourself like a normal person. God's power is behind you. We draw people's attention when we talk to them. You should. Why? Because we have Christ inside of us. Paul saw all the church around him, the Corinthian church. He loved the way they talked. Man, they talked with heavenly language, tongues like angels, he expressed it. But you know what? He discerned that there was no love behind it. How many know that I'm guilty of it too? It's very sad when we talk eloquent to her brothers and sisters but then to her close brothers and sisters all we're doing is gossiping all we're doing is talking bad and tearing people apart we should never do that and if we have get out of that religious lifestyle because no one's perfect get out of that religious lifestyle because God will take your power away when you talk about his child God loves everybody friends and that's what we should do. The greatest act to show somebody isn't your eloquent words. It's the new heart 
that the Lord has given you and I. And I heard something that was powerful the other day. A man said, you know what blows my mind? As we are all filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of love, truth, and power. And we spend more time battling ourselves than anybody in this world. That really spoke to me. Why? Because we start to blame others when it's really ourselves that are causing this drama on us. We start to blame others when it's or the devil that's what he said we start to blame the devil for all of the battles we go through in all reality friends if you have the love of God in your heart you will whip the devil's butt every time he will be afraid of you he should be he should run from you when you have the loving power of God in your heart that's why it's so important to not just study these scriptures, but make it a lifestyle where you and I reflect what the Holy Spirit looks like. If someone just were to say, you can never see what Jesus looks like, that's not true. I look in the mirror and see Jesus all the time. In the Word of God, He says He lives in us. Right, Sister Francine? Someone were to tell me, oh, you don't look like Jesus, read your Word. We're the image of God on earth. The Word became flesh. And the Word lives in us. Back to this scripture. And it says, And if I were, I'm going on verse 3, If I were to be so generous, to give away everything I own, to feed the poor, and to offer my body as a mortar to be burned, but without pure love or motive, I gain nothing. Paul is trying to teach all of us that we cannot buy this love that is ours. We cannot buy somebody with the love of God. We must act on it. Just today, when I was studying this at my job, in my brain, just the scriptures, there was this man, right? We have a language barrier. And the first day that he met me, I can tell he didn't like me because I didn't speak the same language he did. Did it bother me? No. Not at all. So, he kind of just, how can I say? He didn't act right with me. But it bugged him more that it didn't bother me. Because my mind was on other things, especially studying the love of God. So today, this very day today, I did something. I acted on the love of God. I cleaned up his whole area where he works. He didn't ask me to, and it was a mess. I swept all around his area. And he came back with his eyes big, because all he saw me was, was with a pile. Why did I do that? Because the love of God, some people could only see through us. How would I know if there's another Christian that's going to, you know, cross his path? The people that God puts in front of you and I, whether it's in the workplace, in the restaurant, in church, anywhere, it is our responsibility to show them the love of God regardless of how they treat us. And let me tell you something. That day, he treated me like gold all day. He started grabbing my stuff and helping me. His heart changed. Why? Because the love of God cannot be bought. It's acted on. And we must understand this. Because many times we're trying to gain something that we already have. Many times, instead of looking on the outside, I don't know if that gentleman was going through something. I don't know if somebody in his family had COVID. I don't know if he or his loved one was sick. You never know what people are going through. Are going through. All I know is that you and I have the answer for them. And that's the love of God. You and I have the power to show them what God looks like or how the impossible can be possible. If we just listen to these scriptures, 
and act upon them. What I really love about this is the hardest thing when I was reading these scriptures is it says love is patient. I'm not patient. And I know it. But you know what? Love is patient. It is so hard to be patient these days. People get impatient when their phone speed isn't fast enough. People get impatient when their Wi-Fi goes off. I do. People get impatient with the ones that are closest to them. Their children, their spouses, their loved ones. Sometimes people even get impatient with themselves. But you know what, friends? When you start to read the scriptures more, and the honesty of God comes into your heart, and you're truly able to express to the Holy Spirit, say, Holy Spirit, help me with my impatience. He will help you, friends, more than anyone else could, more than you can help yourself. And before you know it, nothing will bother you. Before you know it, the only thing that will bother you is yourself. But nothing else. That's why it's so important to learn from the Holy Spirit the true meaning of love and honest truth. And when you and I find that, we walk in power. We walk in the shelter of God. Not only that, friends, we will never fail someone else. Yes, we may not do what they ask us to do. I've done that many times. But when they need prayer, the love of God is so deep and powerful in their heart, your prayers will be answered. When they need someone to talk to when they're going through it, the love will be so deep in your heart that you won't gossip about it. You'll just take care of it and help them and love them. Another profound thing that I read the other day, or actually heard, was this man of God expressing how much he loved people. He's a powerful preacher. And he said, the mark of a strong man is love, or person, man or woman. And the mark of a weak person is gossip. You see, love is patient. Love is kind. Love is never rude. And it took a long time, and I'm still working on that, to really understand that concept. You see, Christianity is much more than going to church. Christianity is much more than having your own battles against whatever you're going through. Christianity is loving the world and helping them out of darkness. Whatever you and I are focused on, whatever you and I want to do in life, whatever you and I are thinking on the inside, it reflects on the outside. Whatever battle you're going through on the inside, friends, it reflects on the outside, believe it or not. You see, love gives you and I a special integrity. You see, integrity isn't how you act. Integrity isn't what you do for others. But integrity is you inside of yourself. Integrity always starts within the inside, friends. And love, loving God, following Him with all of our heart, with integrity, it starts to show. One commentary said, Integrity expresses truth from the inside out. If you're lying all the time to people, you're lying from the inside. If you're always um, battling and crying and everything on the outside, it's because you have no victory on the inside. But in all honesty, there's hope. The greatest hope of all is following Jesus Christ, expressing how weak we are, and most of all, Letting go of those childish things. After Paul was talking to this Corinthians church, after he was expressing 
um, turning them down about all their gifts and showing them the greatest gift of the love. That's when I love the expression that he used. He said, when I was a child, I thought as a child, I spoke as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Putting away these childish things will help you and I grow. And I never say I'm going to get to another level. No. No. That's not what Christianity is about. It's not about getting to another level. It's about helping others get to where they need to be with God. And you and I have that. You and I have that passion. You and I must seek that. Because God said, by this, all will know that you were my disciple. If you what? Love one another as I have loved you. That's the mark of a Jesus Christ disciple. It's not the gift of healing. It's not the gift of prophecy. It's not the gift of giving. It's not the gift of sacrifice. Though those are all beautiful and amazing. The greatest gift you can give anybody is love. Because love never fails. I'm going to be ending soon. All right, let's, see. let's all pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you just speak to us, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that we all feel your love tonight, God. Let our motives, our motivation, our aim be just to love people, to help them out of their sin, to help them out of their sickness, God. And most of all, help them out of depression and oppression. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I'd just like to give an altar call. If there's anybody who would like to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, please just repeat this prayer. Say, Jesus, I come to you as a Savior. I come to you as a sinner, excuse me, in need of a Savior. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. And this day I accept you in my heart. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks all of you for joining us. God bless you. We'll see you next Friday.